In this video, we'll demonstrate how to create an autonomous op mode that causes a robot to seek and find a sky stone. To access an introductory video on using TensorFlow, use the link displayed on the screen. To navigate to a sky stone, we need to know two things, its direction and its distance. The TensorFlow system provides an estimated angle to an object, but it doesn't provide an estimated distance. In our sample op mode, we'll estimate the distance by calculating the ratio of a stone's height in pixels to the height of the overall video image. A small ratio like 0.2 indicates the stone is still some distance away, while a ratio of 0.5 indicates the stone is quite close. I chose to use the ratio of heights rather than widths because the width of a stone will appear to be larger if it is turned at an angle relative to the robot. Our robot is a rover bot with a jaw that opens at the end of the neck. The neck and the jaw are each controlled by a servo. The robot has four wheels with each of the rear wheels driven by a motor. To get accurate estimates of angle and distance, we mount the robot controller phone close to the mat with the phone's camera lens at the center of the robot. You probably want to mount the phone sideways so its camera has a wider landscape view. If so, make sure you turn on your phone screen's auto-rotate option so TensorFlow will produce accurate estimates of the turn angle to sky stones. At any particular time, the TensorFlow system will detect zero, one, or more objects. In the case of sky stone, the objects will be a mix of stones with and without stickers. We want to ignore the stones that aren't sky stones and focus on one of them that is. Our example op mode goes through a list of objects and focuses on the first sky stone. If a sky stone is detected, the op mode first uses the estimated angle to calculate a pair of motor speeds that will turn the robot towards the stone. The greater the angle, the greater the power levels. It then calculates the ratio of the apparent height of the stone to the height of the video image. It compares the ratio to a target ratio that corresponds to one robot neck length from the stone. If the robot is not close enough, it checks whether it needs to turn first by checking the previously calculated turn power levels. If no turn is needed, it calculates motor power levels proportional to how far it needs to move forward. If it's too close to the stone, it checks whether it needs to turn, and if it does, it will. Otherwise, it calculates the power levels that will back the robot up a little. If the distance is about the length of the robot's neck, it checks to see if it needs to make a final turn to the center of the stone. If not, it sets the motor power to zero and activates the servos to lower the neck and open the jaw. If no objects are detected or objects are detected but none of them are sky stones, it backs the robot up slowly in hopes of bringing a sky stone into view. As we've discussed, our op mode needs to use a pair of motors to drive the robot and a pair of servos to lower the robot's neck and open its jaws. Here's a list of things that need to be in its config file. Let's see how well the op mode works. It's found the sky stone on the left. Now let's try it with the sky stone on the right. It took a bit longer, but it found it again. This program isn't as smooth and reliable as we'd like, but I'll leave it up to you to come up with improvements. To keep this video from getting too long, I've only explained a few parts of the op mode code. You'll notice, however, that I've inserted many comments that explain the code. Here are the web addresses of the full BLK file that you can upload to your robot controller and a file containing an image of the code that you can display or print. We've seen how TensorFlow can be used to find a sky stone and navigate to it. To use this approach during the autonomous period of a sky stone match, you'll need to add blocks to get your robot close to the stones and program the robot to pick up the sky stone. You'll probably need to make a variety of other changes to get your robot to reliably find a sky stone. You may want to research proportional integral differential control, also known as PID control, and consider whether using that technique 
would further improve the effectiveness of the op mode. 